really want to be going for top marks, then you need to have an appreciation of exactly where your marks are coming from. Um, so just remember that you have two different types of question. Um, you have KAA questions, which just assess your knowledge, application, and analysis skills. And then you have your KAA plus um, evaluation questions. Um, so if you look here, these, these keywords um, you need to be looking out for. So these are going to tell you whether your, your, your question is an evaluation question or a non-evaluation question. So here, you can see here, um, if your question has the word examine, discuss, evaluate, assess, or um, the phrase to what extent, it's going to be an evaluation question. Um, whereas any questions without these, these keywords in, they're going to be standalone KAA questions. Okay, so the next step in assessing um, the allocation of marks on offer for, for any given question, um, you, you want to be figuring out, okay, how many, how many marks are available for the evaluation component as opposed to the KAA component. So just remember, um, even within the evaluation question, there's still going to be KAA marks on offer. Exactly how many KAA marks on offer depends on um, the total number of, of marks um, in this question. So you can see here that for any KAA, um, sorry, for any evaluation questions, the allocation of marks available to KAA is never going to be more than, or it's always going to be less than 50%. So here, if you notice for, a, for an eight mark question, for an eight mark evaluation question that is, um, you're going to have six KAA marks and two evaluation marks. Uh, for a 10 marker, there's a six four split, and for a 14 marker, there's an eight six split. Okay, so now we've assessed exactly how many marks are on offer for KAA, exactly how many marks are on offer for evaluation. Um, if you carry on watching, I'm going to tell you exactly how you're going to pick up those KAA marks to begin with. So there are different strands of KAA marks on offer in your um, Edexcel AS level exam. Um, the first of these that you should be going to are your definitions, uh, definitions and, and formulae. So um, if in the question or, or related to the question, you identify that there's a key term that you can define or um, attach to that key term there's a formula, so you're going to give that definition and give that formula. Just simply state it. Uh, but you don't really need to work too hard in incorporating it into your actual answer. Um, simply stating the definition, stating the formula, um, there are marks on offer for that. Okay, so that's your first strand. Your second strand is going to be uh, diagrams. Um, so here, um, external costs, external benefits would be a good example. It doesn't need to necessarily need to be um, an analytical question where you're assessing um, quantity changes or price changes. If, if, if um, kind of related to, to the question, you know there's a diagram that you can draw, then, then draw that diagram. So um, if there's a question on external costs, external benefits, where um, you're, not, you're not analytically looking at um, the socially optimal equilibrium versus the, um, the market equilibrium, it doesn't really matter. You just draw that externalities diagram and you will get credit for it. Okay, similarly, for, for opportunity costs, if you're talking about opportunity costs, you know that you can draw your um, production possibility frontier. So the important thing to remember here is that um, you want to be shoehorning in um, diagrams into as many of these um, KAA-style um, questions as, as possible. Okay, so that's definitions, formulae, um, diagrams. Next strand of marks are your um, actually kind of going to the nuts and bolts of the question and answering the question, it's going to be your identification point, so your reference to the extracts. So here, different ways you can reference the extract. Um, I think personally the, the best way to do it is referring to figures, so if there, there are actual numerical figures in the extracts um, that you can pull out and incorporate into your answer, then do that. But failing that, um, you can use quote marks and pull out bits from, from the extracts, or um, you can say in extract X, um, this, this point is made or an extra why this point is made. Okay, so identification and then your final strand is going to be for your explanation actually um, answering the question if you like. Um, but as you can well see, if you've included these go to KAA points, so your definitions and your diagrams in particular, it makes your life a lot easier and you have to pick up fewer um, of these explanation marks in your answer. <laughs> Um, right, we're going to look at Jan 2013, question number one. Just remember, there's no multiple choice um, in unit two, unlike unit one, which is a little bit trickier. Um, right, questions are up here. Um, so in terms of your evaluation questions, remember you're looking for those key words. Um, here, A, I, 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 you have the word assess. That's going to be an evaluation question. Um, I, I, you have... 
discuss another evaluation question. Sorry, that's BII, that is. Um, question C, II, obviously that's your Monster 30 marker. That's obviously going to be an evaluation question. Uh, but in terms of your um, KA evaluation splits, they're all up there. Just remember, um, it's always going to be less than half the total number of marks available for the evaluation component of each of those questions. Right, so we're going to start off by taking a look at question A, I, unsurprisingly. Um, and remember, we're just looking at the KAA um, marks on offer for each of these questions. So A, I, six marks, standalone KAA question, no real dramas here. Um, it is literally just kind of regurgitation of knowledge. There are very few questions like this. The first question on your um, unit two paper, for either question one, question two, um, it does tend to be um, <clears throat> of this nature, but it will be the only one, and there doesn't tend to be too many marks on offer for it. <clears throat> so with reference to extract one, outline the components of aggregate demands. So take a look there. It says with reference to extract one, so you need to make explicit references to your extracts um, or extract in this case extract one outline the components of aggregate demand and you, you're simply just going to um, list out your different components of aggregate demand for this no, not too difficult okay AII so with as with your previous question um, you can't really go to your go-to KAA marks for these two questions unfortunately um, AII identify and explain two factors that influence the level of business investment um, for eight marks. Um, so just a quick note here, when it says explain two factors or analyze two effects, um, essentially where your, your question is split into two um, separate chains of reasoning, um, rather than going to your go-to KA marks, um, you're just going to split the mark allocation into two. So here um, there's going to be four marks for each factor you talk about. Um, so in terms of your factors, there's lots of different things you could talk about. Um, so I would probably hear, talking about business investment, interest rates, obviously a very big factor. Potentially talk about corporation tax, uh, consumer confidence, and where we are within, within the um, economic cycle, um, general aggregate demand conditions. Um, those would be the, the factors that I talk about. But just remember, so there's two, um, one, two factors, and you need to write a little bit. So, um, Obviously, not just one sentence on each. You, you need to write a little bit at length for each one to pick up four marks for each. Right, so AIII is your first evaluation question. Um, so here there's going to be an 84 split. Remember, it's not going to be a 6-6 split because you're always going to have less than six marks available for the evaluation component. Um, right, so eight KAA marks to pick up here. Um, and it says explicitly... I was reading out the full question. With the aid of an aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram, assess the likely effects on the UK economy of a reduction in business investment. So, um, <clears throat> assess the likely effects of the UK economy using a diagram. So, anytime it explicitly asks you to draw a diagram, you're going to get four marks of that diagram. So, just remember, only eight KAA marks on offer in total. So, it's going to be four marks for your diagram and further four marks for explanation. Here, I probably. Um, it's, 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 it's good practice to get into the habit of including a definition wherever possible. So here I probably would um, define, define business investment. So if you haven't defined business investment in, in the previous bit of the question, try defining business investment here. It doesn't help, it doesn't hurt to chuck in um, definitions because a lot of the time there will be marks available for them. Um, so here, yeah, business investment is probably the, the obvious one. Um, I probably I would never I would never define aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Unlike um, the the AQA exam board, which will give you marks for um, defining demand, defining supply, defining aggregate demand, defining aggregate supply. Edexcel doesn't tend to do that. Um, <clears throat> right. So four marks for our diagram looks like this. It's quite straightforward. So. Um, Investment feeds into your aggregate demand formula. You know that a fall in business investment is going to lead to a fall in aggregate demand. So that's going to happen. Just make sure everything's fully labelled. So your um, so your axes are labelled with a real output and price level. So you need your equilibrium values there as well. Um, so that's four marks. Further four marks for your explanation. Um, so yeah, just describing what's going on in the diagram really. So just pointing out that. Um, there's going to be a fall in output, change in the price level, 
Um, and obviously, if there's a fall in output, um, the output gap is going to increase. And as a byproduct of that, or I suppose um, analogous to that, you're also going to have um, unemployment rising as well. So that's how you pick up all um, the remaining four KA marks on top of the, the four that you've already got for your diagram. So eight in total there. So 1BI is quite a technical question this. And with reference to figure one, explain how the forecast change in the savings ratio from 2010 might affect the value of the multiplier. Um, so it's an eight mark question here. Just because it says the word might, it doesn't mean it's an evaluation question. Um, here your um, kind of directing word is explain rather than assess or evaluate or um, to what extent. So it's going to be a, a simple KAA question. Um, so right, it says with reference to figure one, so that's your first um, signpost. You're going to get two marks for um, referencing the extracts here. So referencing the fall in the savings ratio. Um, and a further two marks for a definition of the multiplier. So up until this point, there haven't been any marks on offer for definitions. It's the first time we're going to pick up definition marks. Um, I mean, the multiplier is quite a technical concept, so I think it's quite an obvious thing to define here. So we've picked up four marks from our definition and our um, reference to the extract. It's another four marks to pick up. These come from your explanations. So just remember, once you've gone to your go-to KAA points, your remaining marks you want to pick up through your explanation. So here, simply stating that if the savings ratio falls, then marginal propensity to consume is going to increase. This is going to raise the value of the multiplier. Those are the links in the chain of reasoning that are required to pick up your remaining marks. It's quite a technical, quite a technical question. Um, if you're not entirely sure about this, I would go to to, to, to you. Um, just search up the multiplier effect or search for uh, marginal propensity to consume and then you can you can look at it that way alternatively uh, there are other good youtube videos which shows graphically um, what the multiplier effect is so just type into 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 youtube multiplier effect and look for something that has lots of arrows going round and round and round and round right so bii 12 mark question with reference to figure two discuss the um, two likely consequences of the output gap from 2009. So um, 2009, um, you have a negative output gap. So, so just this is a, a 12 mark question. Um, it's a discussion and evaluation question. So you're going to have an 8-4 split. So we're looking for 8 KA marks here. Uh, so remember, go to KA marks. We have uh, output gap, quite a technical term, I'm going to define that. Uh, also draw a graph. Unfortunately, here they're only going to give you two marks for either or your graph or your definition. This is quite quite commonplace. Um, but two marks, two marks nonetheless. Um, and then um, data reference, further two marks. So referring to the fact that um, in the in the graph, in the extracts, um, it's showing a negative output gap. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the way this question's worded. Um, discuss two likely consequences of the output gap. And then in the mark scheme, actually what they've, what they've listed aren't necessarily consequences, I'd say more uh, byproducts. So I don't think this question is worded particularly, uh, particularly well, but I think uh, good students will be able to recognize what, what the question is getting at. So, um, so you're talking about a negative output gap. So we've got, sorry, four marks still left um, of our KAA marks to pick up. Um, if you're thinking about a negative output gap, you know unemployment is going to be higher. Um, so if we have a, a, a positive output gap, our resources are going to be um, fully utilised. If we have a negative output gap, our resource, resources are going to be less utilised. We're not going to be at that full employment level. There's going to be unemployment in the economy. Um, other things you could talk about are... Um, um, rural incomes, so um, level consumption and um, disposable income. That's probably what I would go for if you're thinking about a downturn in um, economic conditions. Also, you could go for confidence investment. So if we're in a downward trend uh, or in a recessionary phase of the economic cycle, you know investment's going to be low. Uh, business confidence is also going to be low. Um, the other points in the market that they've, they've, um, they're awarding are government budget balance, international competitiveness and trade balance. I, I suppose 
Um, in a broader context of the question, if you're talking about, um, if you're going to evaluate each of these points, then I guess I guess you could mention each of those, but I don't think it's um, obvious on first inspection of the question that you would be expected to talk about those. And then just to finish off, CI, just a piddly little four marker here. Um, it says, with reference to figure three, identify the change in the UK budget deficit between 2002-2003 and 2010-2011. So um, quite easy to see in terms of, of the actual change. It's going to be uh, a, an increase in the budget deficit. This has been well reported. Um, and then in terms of further kind of exam technique points, just remember your reference to the extracts here. It says re reference to figure three, so you need to make an explicit reference to the extracts. So pull out those figures um, to pick up those marks. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tutoring videos. Remember that full notes and other resources are available on my tutoring website at idktuition.com. And if you'd like me to cover anything in particular, please leave me a message in the comments below or on Twitter at TomDavies32.